Hello, my name is Jim Oswegen. I'm Chief Engineer at Titus and we'll be presenting today's program on air distribution for design and architecture. Titus is a registered provider for the American Institute of Architects Continuing Education System. Credits earned on completion of this program will be reported to AIA slash CES. For AIA members, certificates of completion for both AIA members and non-AIA members are available upon request. This program is registered with AIA slash CES for continuing professional education. As such, it does not include content that may be deemed or construed to be an approval or endorsement by the AIA of any material of construction or any method or manner of handling, using, distributing, or dealing in material or product. Questions related to specific materials, methods, and services will be addressed at the conclusion of this presentation. This presentation is protected by the U.S. and international copyright laws. Reproduction, distribution, display, and use of presentation without the written permission of the speaker is prohibited. The purpose of this course is to educate building owners, architects, developers on modern innovative commercial building air conditioning systems that use conditioned air as a primary medium to transfer heat energy to and from the building space efficiently with consideration for occupant comfort and health. The learning objectives for this course will include understand the basic design and performance objectives of fully mixed air distribution systems. Identify layouts and fully mixed systems that blend with architecture and meet the standards for comfort, health, and safety for occupants. Understand the basic design and performance objectives for a fully stratified air distribution system. Identify layouts for fully stratified systems that blend with the architecture and meet the standards for comfort, health, and safety for occupants. First, we will review some of the basic principles of air distribution required to optimize comfort and health in occupied condition spaces. Let's look at the things of consideration during the design of an air distribution product. This triangle represents the design goals of manufacturers used to develop new products. The goal is to satisfy as many users as possible. Engineers are the most concerned about performance. Architects value aesthetics and contractors look for the lowest cost solution. When it's not possible to satisfy all three groups, a minimum goal is to satisfy two groups, which may vary depending on the application. Meeting and exceeding performance requirements must include creating a comfortable environment for space occupants per ASHRAE Standard 55 and complying with occupant health and safety requirements outlined in ASHRAE Standard 62.1. Designing products that blend in with the building architecture is also an important factor in design. A new product must represent value to the customer to find its way to the marketplace. These two illustrations from Chapter 57 of the ASHRAE Applications Handbook illustrate a meaningful difference between the traditional overhead mixed air distribution system and the low-level displacement ventilation system when used for cooling applications. Fully mixed systems introduce cool air through ceiling and high sidewall outlets above the occupied space. Space air is induced into the air pattern until thermal mixing has occurred throughout the space. As shown when the diagram on the left, space temperatures from the floor level to the return level have very little stratification. By design, displacement outlets are located near the floor with cool air introduced at low velocities, usually less than 100 feet per minute. Slight mixing occurs near the floor until heat sources in the space cause air to stratify, 
resulting in temperature increases in the space from the floor to the return height. Designers select outlets to control stratification to meet requirements for ASHRAE Standard 55. Meeting the minimum requirements for ASHRAE standards are an important part of the design process to maximize comfort and health of the occupants in the space. Standard 55 outlines the requirements for thermal comfort. These include maintaining space temperatures so that occupants do not experience feelings of heat gain or heat loss to the space. Humidity in the space is controlled to maintain a dew point temperature of less than 62.2 degrees Fahrenheit. For most office spaces, it is assumed that the activity level or metabolic level of occupants will be between sedentary or 1.0 to slight activity levels of less than 1.3. Design adjustments are made to include the clothing insulation levels of occupants in the space with a range from light summer attire, a clo rate of 0.5, to business attire with a clo rate of 1.0. Average local velocities in the occupied space must remain below 40 to 50 foot per minute. ASHRAE Standard 62.1 prescribes the minimum ventilation requirements for the space. CFM requirements vary depending on the space usage based on Table 6.1 with a combination of CFM per square foot added to the CFM per person requirement. These baseline CFM requirements are then adjusted based on the system used. Fully mixed systems rely on induction of room air into the supply air stream to comfort the conditioned occupied space without drafts and to compensate for external loads such as windows, computer equipment, and people. Supply air introduced into the space through ceiling or side wall outlets may use ceiling or wall surfaces to mix and thermally condition the space to maintain optimum space temperatures for occupant comfort. Airflow Patterns. There are two basic types of airflow patterns. First, we will look at a circular flow air pattern, sometimes called a radial air pattern. When air is discharged from an outlet and distributed evenly in all directions, it is known as a radial air pattern. Since air is discharged evenly in all directions, the result is that it travels a shorter distance from the center of the outlet to a given terminal velocity, let's say 50 feet per minute. Circular flow patterns have high induction of the room air into the discharge jet and have a tendency to have the air curl back at the end of the jet toward the diffuser. Radial air patterns are well suited for variable volume VAB applications, cooling only applications, but are not well suited for heating applications. These photos show outlets that will deliver a circular flow pattern. It is easy to understand that the round-faced outlets will deliver a radial airflow, but the square stamp-faced and plaque-faced outlets are designed with back pans that will even the flow in the corners as well. This smoke video illustrates the outlet distribution from a radial pattern diffuser. Notice that the air is discharged equally in all directions, including the corners of the unit. The second type of pattern is a cross-flow pattern, or sometimes called a directional flow pattern. With a cross-flow or directional flow air pattern, air is discharged with longer throw in individual sides of the diffuser. The illustration shows a four-way discharge, but it could be three-way, two-way, or one-way as well. With less room air induced into the air pattern, the jet travels a longer distance to a given terminal velocity. However, because there is less induction, there remains more cool air in the jet as it slows down, and at velocities less than 75 feet per minute, buoyancy will separate the air from the jet's surface of the ceiling, causing the possibility for drafts to occur in the occupied zone below that area. 
The diffusers shown on this slide are good examples of units designed to produce a cross-flow air discharge pattern. This photo shows how ceiling diffusers with an open ceiling design can be used to condition this landscaped office environment. It should be noted that when the outlet is used in an open ceiling, the distance the air travels to 50 feet per minute will be reduced by 30% due to air induction on top of the air jet as well as below the air jet. This smoke video shows that when an outlet is designed for open ceiling, the air jet will be discharged horizontally without an adjacent ceiling surface being present. This smoke video amply illustrates how discharged air from an outlet not designed for an open ceiling can result in a potential discomfort to occupants. Many ceiling diffusers are designed to combine a clean look with optimal performance. These diffusers balance the requirements for performance and aesthetics. Long, continuous linear bar and slot diffusers are designed to meet a variety of aesthetic and performance requirements. Bar grills are good options for floors, sills, and sidewall applications. Other designs are better suited for ceiling applications. Adjustable linear diffusers can be joined together for a long, continuous look. Air pattern controllers are a maximum of three feet in length to allow for total control of airflow pattern adjustments to the space. Pattern adjustments can be horizontal in either direction, plus vertical and angular air discharge as well. All models are available with custom curving as an option. The frame on this linear diffuser is specifically designed for use with specialty ceiling systems by Armstrong and Hunter Douglas. Comprehensive shape and accessory options are available to meet most design requirements. Linear diffusers can be custom curved to accommodate any design flow. Supply grills. Supply grills can be mounted at many locations on the walls, including near the ceiling, where surface effect assists longer throws and less drop. Above the occupied zone, where no ceiling surface is reachable, and commonly, with modern design, directly mounted to the supply air duct. Horizontal blades can assist in limiting drop by deflecting the air jet upward. Vertical blades can be used to control the throw distance by spreading the air horizontally to change the air pattern from directional to radial. An enhanced performance feature of supply grills is an airfoil shaped blade. Airfoil shaped blades will reduce the noise and pressure. For design, it is recommended that an air velocity in the supply duct be less than a thousand feet per minute. Also, static resistance at the outlet must be at least 1.4 times the velocity pressure of the supply air to avoid turning the air from an outlet to an air inlet. Exposed duct systems are one of the fastest growing trends in the commercial sector. These products are designed to mount on spiral ducts. Some frame styles are fitted to the radius of the supply duct Air scoops can assist in directing the airflow into the space. Round supply grills have adjustable blades and return grills are equipped with fixed deflection blades and cores. These space outlets show some plan views and how to overcome some obstacles as previously noted. Open Bay. The selection of a product for spiral duct mounting is important since many products require a ceiling to produce horizontal airflow. These outlets shown are designed for long throw. Cafeteria. This photo shows an open ceiling cafeteria with an array of ceiling independent round diffusers similar to an open office plan we viewed earlier. Workout facility. 
The outlets in this workout facility are mounted at an angle to direct the air toward the occupants. While I would not recommend this arrangement for stationary or sedentary occupants, for this facility where metabolic rates are higher during exercise, it is an acceptable arrangement. Arenas and Churches Sporting arenas and large churches employ general air distribution from above the occupants. For stadium seating conditioned air above and behind the occupants, supply outlets should discharge cool air horizontally and let it drop from the buoyancy condition the occupants in the front lower seats. When architectural demands for hidden outlets is required, remember the rules of airflow discussed earlier will still apply. Smaller churches sometimes use linear grills mounted in the floor discharging air upward along the perimeter wall. For this application, the horizontal area served will be approximately 1.5 times the vertical distance of a jet to 50 feet per minute. These linear diffusers have been crafted to blend in with the architectural shape of the space while providing comfort to the occupants in the space below. For this high bay application in a major international airport, supply air is introduced to the space through large linear bar grills which are curved to match the space and condition the passenger area below. Curved linear supply air diffusers provide comfort condition with the high sidewall mounting in the upper area and the curved ceiling mounting in the lower area. Ballrooms and lobbies. Fully mixed systems again provide a low first cost solution for large spaces with high ceilings. Ballrooms are many times equipped with retractable dividing walls so that a large room can be subdivided into smaller rooms to add flexibility to the space. For many high ceiling applications, it may enhance occupant comfort to design using outlets with colliding air streams or conical air patterns as long as the projected air velocities to 50 feet per minute do not penetrate below the 6 foot above the floor level. Architectural Linears These ceiling diffusers are shaped to match the serpentine architecture of the ceiling layout. The adjustable pattern controllers are also functional, so adjustments to the air pattern can be made to optimize comfort for occupants in the area below. Retail Spaces The outlet is located by the red arrow. Retail spaces offer designers a broad range of challenges for different space applications. Since floor space is at a premium, outlets mounted indiscreetly above the retail space are usually preferred for these areas. The Bookstore This bookstore has maximized the floor and ceiling space by mounting the linear air supply outlets directly to the side of the spiral duct at the ceiling along the wall above the bookshelves. Look at the arrow on the top right of the photo. Also, this linear diffuser is shaped to match the curved radius of the supply air duct. Large Atriums This is a large 10-story high atrium. The goal here is to provide comfort for the occupants and proper temperature and humidity control for the foliage. Can you find the diffusers in this photo? They're in the vertical pillar near the red arrow. Slope ceilings. There are several things happening with the outlet selected to condition this slope ceiling space. First, the ceiling outlets are coated with a special finish to blend in with the architectural ceiling. We'll discuss this a few slides down. The linear outlets in a high ceiling can condition the second level walkway. Other outlets provide conditioned air along the perimeter of the building. There's a third set of linear diffusers that are mounted in the sidewall discharging air across the open area. An open ceiling. 
The yellow rectangle in this open ceiling application with a grid without tiles, everything is black, including the diffuser. For this application, it would also work to mount the ceiling independent outlet above the open grid. A floating ceiling application. Plaque diffusers are mounted in the floating ceiling above this lounge area. Library. Linear bar grills are curved to match the wall radius near the wall-mounted lights. Air is discharged horizontally across the space. These linear diffusers are available with 0 degree deflection or 15 degree deflection. If the 15 degree pattern is selected, it would be most common to be deflected upward to minimize the drop and draft in the occupied space below. These outlets and accessories are designed to perform a specific function in the air distribution system. A heating cooling plenum slot diffuser. This is a self-contained auto changeover plenum slot diffuser which directs 100% of the airflow across the ceiling during cooling and 100% of the airflow downward in front of the glass during heating requirements. The diffuser has a self-contained power source and a smart card that directs the supply air in the direction desired based on the temperature of the supply air at the inlet. This smoke video illustrates that when the supply air reaches the changeover temperature that the pattern switches instantly from horizontal cooling to vertical heating and then back on demand. The heating pattern is back at an angle of about 10 degrees so that the unit can be located 18 to 24 inches away from the glass and the air will be directed toward the front edge of the glass. Nozzle diffusers. These specialty outlets are generally used to supply air in high bay areas above the occupants in malls, lobbies, and transient areas such as airports. The ceilings are usually very high ceilings and have walkways with multi-stories and high open areas in the center. Using nozzle diffusers mounted high or at multiple levels is an effective way to provide air to these spaces. Most occupants are transient in these areas. A site resistant egg crate return grill. This egg crate return grill has a 45 degree deflection face to limit the site into the plenum. This is designed for plenum return applications where an open egg crate grill requires an optional light shield to block the view into the ceiling cavity or light shining through skylights into the space. The angled blades will limit that exposure. Many optional accessories are available to complement installation air volume control for these grills, registers, and diffusers. Mounting frames are a good way to use a standard lay-in ceiling diffuser and create an access space above hard ceiling areas. It is always recommended to have balancing dampers located away from the inlet of the diffuser so that any noise generated by the damper can be attenuated before entering the diffuser. As discussed earlier, these special finish selections are designed to blend the outlet into the surrounding ceiling, floor, or wall space. Over 50 optional wood grain and special finishes are available for linear bar and selected ceiling diffusers. This durable powder coated finish meets AAMA standards and is guaranteed to get attention. These products are specifically designed for applications in Hunter Douglas systems including Luxalon, Textile, and Gladius grids as shown in the photo above. Now let's look at displacement ventilation. Displacement ventilation is a fully stratified comfort conditioning system that has become a popular solution to handle spaces where ventilation effective and quiet solutions are desired. Some of the basic system concepts. For displacement ventilation systems, cool air is introduced at low levels near or at the floor. Air is discharged horizontally across the floor at low velocity, usually less than 100 feet per minute, until a heat source is reached. 
Cool air will mix with the heat and stratify upward until it reaches the return height. First, because these air outlets are very large, air is discharged at a low velocity, which means the system static pressure requirement is lower than most mixed air outlets. ASHRAE Standard 62.1 recognizes superior performance of displacement outlets by reducing the outdoor air requirements for these systems. Again, because these outlets are large and discharge velocities are low, NC noise levels are lower than the typical mixed outlets or fan distributed systems. Finally, a major benefit of displacement systems is a single pass contaminant control system. As cool air along the floor is stratified, contaminants lighter than air are carried upward to the return to be filtered before air returns to the space. Discharge air patterns. The dark area near the outlet shows what is known as the adjacent zone. This is the area where mixing occurs and velocities are usually greater than 50 feet per minute. It is best to avoid having permanent occupants in the adjacent zone. When possible, it is best to locate the adjacent zone in transient spaces. In general, comfort condition space can be accomplished until the jet velocity slows down to about 10 to 15 feet per minute, as illustrated by the lighter shaded area. This comfort area is usually five to six times the length of the adjacent zone. In this example, we show how several seating locations around the conference table would likely fall into the adjacent zone of a standard radio pattern diffuser. Then, we show how the adjustable pattern controllers can be set to kick the air along the walls and away from the occupants. With non-adjustable diffusers, it would be completely up to the designer to select the product that would avoid any of the comfort issues, and there would be no flexibility for future needs. Since these outlets are generally located at or near the floor, they are large in variety of sizes and shapes to blend in with a large variety of spatial requirements. Care should be taken to locate outlets in unobstructed spaces where air can flow freely to the occupied spaces. Displacement diffusers. This illustration shows how some units serve large spaces at higher airflow rates and are very tall and take up a large space. This unit can mount inside a wall cavity. Air is discharged into the room outward in a one-way air pattern. This unit can mount in the wall or in front of the wall. Air is still discharged outward in the front only with a one-way discharge air pattern. A rectangular three-way. This unit mounts in the room in front of the wall. Discharging air from the sides and front provides a three-way hemispherical air pattern that spreads air uniformly along the wall and a shorter distance into the room. Another three-way. Similar to the last unit, this three-way discharge air has a rounded face for a more pleasant appearance. A rectangular stair riser. Ideal for theaters and rooms with risers, this unit mounts directly into the riser and discharges comfort condition air directly under the occupied seats. The stratified air will rise and carry unwanted lightweight contaminants from the space to the high level returns. Return air can then be filtered and conditioned air for a safe trip back to the occupied space. Circular. This displacement outlet can be mounted directly into the floor plenum that discharges air horizontal in a radial air pattern. This unit can be ducted or supplied with a plenum air in a manner similar to underfloor air distribution. Semicircular. This outlet discharges air in a 180 degree radius air pattern. The rounded face is well suited for many architectural applications. For example, I've seen this outlet used in a library where it's located at the end of a bookshelf. These semicircular diffusers can be mounted to blend in well when mounted in an indiscreet transient locations. 
This U-shaped outlet is ideal where it is desired to discharge more air sideways along the wall and less into the space. This is a corner unit with a flat face. This corner unit with a flat face discharges air in a 90 degree discharge air pattern. In a similar manner, this rounded corner unit discharges air at 90 degrees as well. Displacement ventilation is generally a cooling only system. This dual chamber diffuser was designed for school in Southern California that wanted to do heating through the same ducts and diffuser as cooling. This diffuser is built with a rear plenum that can supply air to either a large displacement panel for cooling or redirect the air through a lower grill section for heating. The reduced size of the, of the lower grill increases the discharge velocity to get a higher projection for needed for heating. The diverting damper can be activated by a small electric actuator connected to the room thermostat. A more modern solution is a self-powered energy harvesting model that will be completely standalone. Airflow changes directly from heating to cooling are based on supplier temperature, similar to the auto changeover plenum slot diffuser that we discussed earlier. One more time. Let's look at some space layouts to show plan views of how to overcome some obstacles previously noted. As mentioned earlier, displacement ventilation is ideal for large spaces. This private office, office is not a large space, but can be an ideal solution for displacement ventilation. Again, as mentioned earlier, it's not ideal for partition office spaces. This is an example of how to condition a partition office space. The units are located outside the cubicle in the transient area, discharging air forward into the occupied cubicles. This is an example of how to use a 360 degree round outlet. Another area suitable for these outlets could be the transient area of an airport. Perimeter conference rooms. These corner outlets are conditioning a conference room. This is a good example of where adjustable pattern controllers again can be used to redirect the adjacent zone to avoid occupants. This classroom example shows a common arrangement for displacement ventilation. Since most classrooms are densely populated, it may be difficult to ensure that all occupants are outside the adjacent zone. It is recommended that you take caution not to put the teacher in the adjacent zone. Another illustration. This illustration on the left shows how the dual chamber outlet will distribute warm air across the floor for heating comfort. The illustration on the right shows the traditional distribution of cool air into the space during cooling conditions. This eliminates the need for a special system to be installed to meet heating requirements. This video shows a low velocity of air being discharged into the space. When supply air is at least two degrees cooler than the space air, air will cascade downward to the floor and slowly travel across the floor until reaching a heat source where it will then stratify. This smoke video shows the warm air being distributed across the floor from the lower chamber during a call for heat. This is a hybrid displacement solution for school classrooms on the perimeter. This hybrid displacement solution also includes water source technology to lower energy costs for sensible cooling and dedicated outdoor air source technology to handle the ventilation and latent requirements for perimeter school classrooms. Both heating and cooling needs are met. Add low noise levels and you have an ideal solution for classrooms. Since these units are water source and dedicated outdoor air source technology, Active chill beams are an ideal complement for the interior spaces. This photo shows how well the unit fits in with the architecture of the classroom. 
To recap what we've talked about, the type of system to optimize comfort and health is the first step in a good design. Selecting outlets to meet performance requirements and blend with the architecture of the design elements is also important.